Hey everybody, welcome back to another World Cup episode. We're getting closer. Very to close. To the end. Too close. Um, and I mean, we have a finalist, Spain. Congrats to Spain. They are officially in the finals. Uh, it's this is, this is wild, Sarah. I was not rooting for Sweden because they beat my America. However, I think I was rooting for Sweden. I was going to say, I think you, I thought you were rooting for them. Okay, I was. I think I was. I just, you know, we're going to read a stat in a second, but the amount of tears they had the last few years, it's just really sad. And they're, you know, they're a good team. And um, how's it going, everyone? I'm sure every single person listening watched Spain versus Sweden and I saw the sign that they didn't win, and I am sad. Uh, <laughs> that was a Swedish song reference of Ace Why? of Base. <laughs> just sad. Okay, Sarah's going to read from this article, and then we're going to talk about it. Okay. And late goal sends Spain to Women's World Cup final with 2-1 to one win over Sweden. They will face the winner of the other semifinal between tournament co-host Australia and England on Sunday in the final in Sydney. Spain will play for its first Women's World Cup championship after Olga Olga Carmona's goal in the 89th minute lifted La Roja to a 2-1 victory over Sweden in the Tuesday semifinal. Spain, which overcame last year's mutiny by its players against coach Jorge Vilda, will play the winner of the tournament co-host Australia and England on Sunday in the final in Sydney. The winner Sunday will be a first World Cup champion. Sweden has now lost in four or five semifinals and will play and will play for a fourth third place finish. Yeah, so that stat right there, they have Sweden has been they keep saying they're the bridesmaids, they're the third place team because they because they have gotten so close so often. Always a bridesmaid, never yes. a bride. <laughs> Sweden have been eliminated at the semifinal stage of the FIFA Women's World Cup for the fourth time, 1991, 2011, 2019, and 2023, the most of any side. Heartbreak. Yes. Absolutely. I mean, I guess the idea, though, is if you can't, if you can't, if you can't win, you can't win. You know, there's not, there's not a lot, uh, only they can do what they can do, and if they're not winning, you know... At least they make it pretty far. Yeah, I, I mean, mean they're... or like we talked about France, they haven't they've they haven't made it to a finals of any major tournament. Sweden came in uh, second, got the silver medal at the Olympics, and I mean, go you know watching the game, I guess, Sweden didn't look bad the first half. They actually played probably their best football in the first half. Sweden didn't look bad. There was a couple chances by Sweden. Really made the defense work, the the Spanish defense work, and this match wasn't one sided at all. It Sweden had some really good good chances in the first half, zero zero going in halftime, and then they got back from half, and then right at the fifty seventh minute, Alexia was out, and they brought on you know they brought on the golden girl Salma para el vuelo. I guess that was the plan because everyone knows what she can do. We saw what she did against the Netherlands. And I mean, she is quite an exciting player and only 19. And I mean, it definitely made a difference. But I mean, I guess we'll go to the goals because I mean, it was a while before we saw a goal in the 81st minute. And uh, that was by, I mean, she's the star of the show. I mean, out of everyone's coming out. Salma para lo vuelo. Whoa. I mean, she scored. She's the star of the show. I mean, she subbed in. They kept feeding her the ball. Um, the moment she got the ball, it was unnerving for the Swedish side. I mean, you never know. She's so quick. And anytime she got the ball, it looked nervy. I mean, it, I think it was bound to happen that she would score, but she scored in the 81st minute. I mean, do you see the way she turned and moved and she went through right two defenders? It was yeah, beautiful. It was, it was, it was, yeah. I mean, definitely deserved it. Then I'm thinking, okay, late goal. This is wild because there was no goals until that point. 81st I minute, know. there was no goals. Up before then, I was thinking, is this going to go to overtime? Yeah. Is this going to go to PK? That's what I was thinking. Ooh, I know. Nail biter. <laughs> um, and then in the seven minutes later, there was a Swedish goal. I mean, beautiful yeah. by the two subs as well. It was it was Hertig for the assist and Bloomquist for the goal. And it was beautiful. I mean, yeah. And you saw the Swedish team light back up. They said, we got this. We got this. That was short lived. <laughs> I, I know, like and a I, minute. And I huh? laugh only because it's so sad because I, I was reading for Sweden. Yeah. Um, and then in the 89th minute, Olga Carmona scores off a set piece, off a corner kick. And, you know, a lot of people are making the comparison. A lot of the goals throughout Swedish's run, the Swedish run, have been from set pieces. And that's how they're beaten is by that set piece. Mm. Um, and at the end of the day, Spain won, you know, and the commentator said, 
The commentator said Spain, the team who won, deserved to win. Overall played better. Their subs made a difference. I mean, both sides' yeah. subs made a difference, but the Spain subs were, you know, they got it right with the subs. Mm-hmm. Um, heartbreaking for Sweden. I mean, like we said, they have been the bridesmaids so often. They have been, but it wasn't to be. One thing I didn't think we were going to talk about again, and I did not think we were going to talk about this again because I thought we had kind of talked about it the last few videos. But we got to talk about the refing again because the refing was Spain deserved to win. So it's not about Spain not deserving. They actually, they definitely deserve to win. Right. But so many calls went in the favor of Spain. And I think a, a lot, so many people on social media, um, even though the Swedish commentators uh, were talking about so many calls were going in favor of Spain that I'm just going to read a comment that I see, but this is one of thousands. Great Spanish goals and ref clearly favored Spain. Pushes pushes in back were called against Sweden, not Spain. Last possession was clearly a corner kick for Sweden, and it was given to Spain. Oh, well. And then if you go on other social media... Sweden versus Spain plus referee. How much did the ref cost? I wonder what game the ref saw. The one thing that that other comment said about the last possession, you and I watched it. It was the plus seventh minute, sixth minute. Um, mm-hmm. It was... It was Carmona and Herdig. They were running together, and I didn't see any contact. Um, but Carmona went down. I think she was kind of selling it. She went down, and they called a foul on Herdig. To me, she didn't even touch her. Um, yeah, it, 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 to me, it looked like there was no contact at all. Such a soft foul at that moment. I mean, if, you know, any contact that was there, it didn't even... Very, very soft. Even the commentator mentioned that. And so that would have been a corner in the very last minute for Sweden. And Sweden's bread and butter is their corners. So you give that ball to Spain, effectively ending the game, kind of. But that foul, I mean, giving the ball to Spain at that moment, um, I didn't think that if, if that's a foul call in the USA, I'm pissed. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. And that's the way I look at it. But I mean, I think a lot of people, and I thought a lot of people thought that was representative of a lot of calls within the uh, within the game. There was mm-hmm. also another moment where I believe Alexia pushed one of the Swedish players. I forget who it was. So Alexia pushed, and then the Swedish player, I'm, I'm blanking on their name, went and kind of pushed the ball away with her hand because she was frustrated because she thought she was going to get the a call, I believe. Right. But then they gave, like... The foul to the you know her for pushing the ball away after she had been pushed. Ugh, yeah, that's frustrating. So there was a lot of instances where I think more calls went on the uh, went on the Spanish side, like but what, like we've talked about, that's gonna happen. But even um some of the players on the on the Swedish team couldn't hide their frustration. I'm gonna read a little bit from this article. Amanda Illestat rages against the referee, blowing at us all the time. Sweden misses the World Cup final after losing 2-1 to Spain in the semis. Then center-back Amanda Illestet rages against Brazilian referee Edina Alves. I think she blows against us all the time, all the time during the entire match, she tells SVT Sport. I think she blows against us all the time, all the time throughout the match, especially at the end. There are situations where it's not even close to a free kick and she blows left and right. It is extremely frustrating. I'm not going to blame the referee, but working against the wind in a match like this feels frustrating, says Illestad. So yeah, so even she felt like the refs were against her. And I saw some good, you know, commentators talking about even if you feel like the refs are against you, just have to keep pushing on not let that frustrate you right um but it did seem like and i thought we were done i thought you know we were done talking about the refs because we had talked about it so much because actually somebody had left a good comment um michael left a comment saying fifa has to train all the referees because all yeah. referees come from different regions so Very true. most people said refs aren't perfect they're gonna make mistakes and i get that like i i know that's just the way just any sport that has refing but this match it seems it did seem pretty one sided, and I and I was done talking about the refs. I really was because everyone knows refs are gonna do what they're gonna do. You can't change them. So what did everyone think? We're gonna talk about something else. But are you are you a Swedish fan who is frustrated, or are you a are you a Spanish fan who says you know I understand it, but that's just the way it goes? Because I guess I just look at it. If it's America, if if it's the U.S. and they're making calls against the U.S., I'm annoyed. I'm mad. I'm pissed. But then if it is the team, the opposite team that America's playing, and they get they don't get the calls, so I'd be like, well, that's you know, 
sucks. It was kind of a wild ref, but I get it. So it's like you almost look at it. I always look at it the side of if I'm on the team, I have to expect that for my own team too. You know what I mean? But one thing I will say, I'll move on to this because this kind of just illustrates the the sportsmanship, <laughs> not that kind of sportsmanship. But <laughs> two um, of the most prominent players on their team, Rolfo and Bonmati, they at the very end of the match, they swapped jerseys and they hugged and they showed, you know, Rolfo, I'm sure it was the, the sad, one of the saddest moments of her sporting career. Um, yeah. But she's there with Bonmati and they are hugging. I mean, looking at that picture, you would not know who won and who lost the match, realistically. Yeah. Supporting, you know, friends supporting friends. Yeah, they both play for Barcelona and they're like best friends. And, you know, I'm sure they were both happy for each other no matter what happened. But that just goes to show you, you, you just lost one of the biggest games of your life, but they're best friends and they, you know, they say no. So I thought that was really sweet. And, you know, it's a hard time, but people are more important than sport. You know what I mean? Yeah. So did everyone see that? Those were those really cute pictures. Um, but again, the Swedish team devastated. I mean, I'm sure you saw them crying. It's so bad for her and the whole team, um, especially their senior members of the team. But one thing, you know, that has been a storyline throughout this World Cup is the Spanish team. And, you know, I, I've said in this couple of videos, I root for the women who are on the team. I don't, you know, I don't root for Jorge Vilda. I, you know. Or the Federation. Or the Federation. But I'm trying to think. Say they go into the match against, say they, say they win the World Cup, you know, does this give, does this give more power to the players? You would think, no, it's going to give more power to Jorge Vilda and the Federation. But in my head, it's almost like these players are going to have more public support for when they bring up issues. So maybe I want them to win. Well, I want anyone to win who wins, you know, fairly, but maybe it helps the players have more support because they're going to be more well known. And then they can go to the, the general public will be more on the player side with any, if grievances in the future it's a tough situation because obviously i want them to uh be treat because you want them to be treated you know fairly and equally and with dignity i yeah, mean right right i saw a pundit talk about it saying jorge, jorge vilda will be the manager as long as he wants to be the manager and that's unsettling to hear does he too. own the team <laughs> i know hell? i know so and that's unsettling to hear but i've also heard that uh you know they're not necessarily happy over at you know camp Spain because I heard that there was fighting in the locker room like between people we've seen the pictures of them not celebrating with Jorge Vilda um sounds like yeah a big divide yeah and then I've also heard I didn't realize there was this controversy that some of people slash they are actually t saying to the women who decided to play not only the three who actually signed the letter who actually are playing but the other you know the, the people who in a way, cross the picket line. I heard that some people are giving them guff for, you know, playing when everyone else was against playing. Like, there, there's, like, divisions. There's a bunch of divisions over there. So, I don't know. And no, it's, I, I respect both sides, you know what I mean? The players who decided to play and the players who didn't want to play. Yeah. Like, Mappy Leon. Everyone knows she's maybe one of the most famous players who says, I'm not playing. I'm sticking to this. This is what I believe because it's not right what they're doing. Literal icon. <laughs> Literal icon. It just sucks. It sucks. But hopefully in the long run, there's going to be, um, there, if they do win the World Cup, there's going to be change over there overall because the players might have more power. But this team's so young. You know, this is the team, the players that they brought to the World Cup are players who probably feel like no matter what they do, they have to agree with uh, the Federation and Jorge Vilda because if they don't, they're out. And they know that. Right, yeah. And that's unfortunate to hear that these women probably are playing in fear. A lot of them playing in fear. Oh, yeah, that sucks. That's so, a bad environment. And I think that's another reason I, I you know, I well, I was rooting for Sweden, even though they beat America. But, but I'm happy for Spain. I'm definitely rooting for them. Hopefully, uh, you know, they deserve to win. But, uh, but yeah, definitely rooting for them. I'm happy for them. But now, moving on to the game that will be tonight. I mean, this is the game. This is uh, Australia versus England. I, they've talked about a lot about the rivalry between Australia and England. And um, I think a lot of people, we talked about it yesterday, you know, you know, I've seen a lot of people say, not necessarily in our comment section, but the idea is England will be insufferable if they win uh, for the next four years. They'll be insufferable. <laughs> And the way I look at that, most people think United States were unsuff insufferable when they kept winning. You know what I mean? Any, or I keep saying e anyone but England. But I'm saying you are the person on top if people are telling you that anyone but England. Um, yeah. But who do you have in tomorrow's 
who do you have in tonight's match for England versus Australia? Who do I think is going to win or who do yeah. I want to win? Well, okay, this is the way I did it. Who does your heart tell you want to win? And then who does your head think is going to win? England might win it. Okay, oh. I'm okay with anyone winning. Te- okay, so team everyone like me. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to cheer whoever scores, whatever yeah, happens. I'm going to be happy for either one. cheering. And obviously, ah, God, we're probably going to talk about this more tomorrow, but everyone knows that Christy and Sam... We just call Sarah Sarah the Sam Christy channel sometimes. <laughs> but um, the question is, is Christy going to be at the match? I She did get papped at the airport. So we will see if she's at the match because we we know a lot of other NWSL players have already reported back to their clubs um, for who, who are at the World Cup. We did see her at the Sydney airport. Now, does that mean she might be taking a connecting flight back home? Or does that mean she is um, staying at Sydney because that's where the game is? Um, I think she's going to be there. I got to go. Okay. But Sarah, I got to go real quick, but Sarah will close it out, close it out for you. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye. Is she going to be there? Um, um, I hope she's there. And I mean, I know the storyline, we're not going to talk, I'm not going to talk about it now, but I know the big storyline is like the Christy tri- love triangle, because if you think about it, Christy was with Rachel Daly for a few years, a couple of, a few years. Now Christy's with Sam who plays for Australia. So it's kind of like the awkward thing where that's my ex who I was with for a pretty long time now with my current girlfriend who I've been madly in love with for a few years so I think that is kind of you know that's a storyline that's a storyline the papers love we might read from an article tomorrow depending on no matter who wins we just don't have time in this video today but it must be interesting for Christy to see like oh got all the attentions on my two loves my two my two relationships um and it must be a weird situation for her a little bit because remember when in the 2019 World Cup, Christy's sister Sam was playing for the U.S. Women's National Team and then Rachel was playing for the English team. So that was kind of like that. Who do you root for? Your sister or your girlfriend? I think she was probably rooting for her sister. But <laughs> but in this game too, obviously Christy is not rooting for Rachel because she's with Sam right now. But it's definitely an ex- interesting storyline for this World Cup. And I wonder if Christy's going to be there, you know? I hope she is, because obviously we love Christy. Uh, but we will see. What does everyone think? Questions, comments down below. Uh, were you pumped for Spain? You know, I'm pumped for them. They played great. They're such an exciting team to watch. Again, a lot of the Spanish players play together on club, either play for Barcelona or play for Real Madrid. So they already have that kind of like, they already play as a team, you know? Even though I know the style of the national team is different than their club teams, obviously, but you know, they, they're great, you know, they're so talented and they do have that advantage of so many of them playing together. Uh, but Sweden, I know your United States is rivals. You beat us at the Olympics. You beat us, beating us here, but I really like the team and it's a good team. Uh, you know, I love Magda. Anytime I see her, it's just like, she kind of melts my heart. She's, what does everyone think? Questions, comments down below. We'll be back soon. And Sarah says bye, but she had to go do something. <laughs> she just yelled out. We'll talk to everyone later. Have a great night. Bye.